I'm Doug Cuny. This is my kitchen and today I'm going to show you how to make naturally fermented sauerkraut. Back prior to the days before refrigeration, our ancestors had to have a way to store their harvest from the summer and the fall. And cabbage was uniquely suited for that sort of thing. Uh, when you ferment cabbage and make it into sauerkraut, it develops an entire colony of yeast and bacteria that are what we would call today probiotic. They're actually very good for our system. Uh, they help us heal. They uh, help boost our immune system. And most of all, they assist in our digestion and they aid with the assimilation of nutrients in our stomachs and our intestines. So by fermenting cabbage into sauerkraut, you actually develop a kind of a superfood that has all of these nutrients that wouldn't be occurring in cabbage when it was fresh. Now the primary tools that you're going to need for making sauerkraut besides a large sharp knife is a container to make it in. If you're making small quantities you can use mason jars, either two quart, one quart uh, with the sealable lids. When you're doing sauerkraut make sure you don't torque these down. It's going to have to relieve pressure. Traditionally, the way most people used to make them was in crocks, like this. And the point of making sauerkraut is you need to separate it from the air. It has to be under the brine. Exposed to air, it might start um, spoiling rather than fermenting. So in these cases, these small crocks, usually we see large three-gallon ones, but traditionally they're made in crocks like this. And I've made um, lids held in with dowels, no glue or metal, and it slips down inside. You can put your sauerkraut in there or your pickles and put a rock on top of it to hold it down. Uh, the one that I use the most is this one, which will make about 28 pounds of sauerkraut. And it's got a water seal lid. It's got a small opening a channel around here and a bell-shaped lid. You can set that in there, fill it with water, and it keeps it excludes the, the air and the gas fills up the inside. In order to hold it down, I have a couple of these same construction, but because of the narrow neck here, I split these in two so that they would go in and hold the sauerkraut underwater. Now there's a Another style, and this is a one gallon style, you see it bubbling. I've already got sauerkraut in this. This is um, distributed by Cultures for Health. And if you're just starting out, you might want to try one of these. It's got a sealable lid. It's got a, uh, a vent, a port, uh, that's basically a small water seal version of, of this big one. Uh, in this case, because I can't get something inside flat to hold it down, uh, I've actually taken a freezer bag, a gallon freezer bag full of brine, taken the air out and put that in on top of that to hold it down. Hold the, uh, the uh, sauerkraut down below the, the moisture. And then as the gas escapes, it comes up and works its way out. Now this style, if you can find one of these or even the bigger ones in a hardware store, order it, uh, and you don't want to make plates like this, you can use a regular a dinner plate or go to the um, secondhand store and find a plate that s slips down inside. You can use that to hold the sauerkraut under the brine and then put a rock or a weight or even the... Um, um, plastic bags with brine in it on top of it to hold it down then you just put a cloth over the top of that. So once you've got your sauerkraut making container picked out and I, I forgot to mention that make sure you're using a glass or ceramic or crockery container don't use metal uh, it will react adversely with the acid that's formed in the fermentation process. So once you've got that established and you know what you're going to use, you're going to need uh, cabbage, you're going to need caraway seed, or you're going to need salt. 
In this case, you're going to want to use sea salt, pickling salt, or kosher salt, preferably a larger grain. Uh, any of those work. Do not use iodized salt. The iodine in the salt is meant to kill bacteria and that's exactly what you don't want the salt to do. In this case, you want it to help promote the uh, culture you're trying to, to grow. I'll need fresh whey, which uh, you don't have to use. If you don't have it available, then double the amount of salt you're using. I like to use um, a combination of the, the salt and the whey because the whey actually jump starts the lacto fermentation process. Then we'll need filtered water uh, in order to mix with our salt to make brine. This is how you proceed. First you take a cabbage and you split it from the, from the base in half. You split it into quarters. And then you simply take the cores and cut them out at an angle. Now, if you like cabbage, a little bit of salt, these make a pretty nice snack. In this case, for the sake of speed, I'm just going to throw them out. Now, you're going to want to find the largest pan that you have, excuse me, the largest bowl you have put this into. Simply chop this up. When you get down toward the end, just flip it over on the side so you're not juggling. There. Now we'll take that. And we'll put it in the large, matter of fact, there we go, in the large bowl and then continue to slice the rest of this up. I've got my cabbage all sliced up and one thing that I didn't mention to you, uh, you don't have to do this but this makes it a lot easier. Before you start chopping up your head, take a couple of the outer leaves off from each head and just set them to one side. You're going to use these later in order to hold your sauerkraut in place. Once you've got your cabbage sliced up and in your bowl, it's time for you to start assembling the other ingredients. And those would be, first off, a tablespoon of caraway seed. You're going to take your salt, your non-iodized salt, and you're going to put a tablespoon of the salt. Then we're going to take some whey, and I'm going to put four tablespoons of whey, which will help start the fermentation process. Now, if you don't have whey, like I said, you can get, get away with just using salt. I would double the salt. At this point, we'll take, just get in there with your hands and mix the ingredients up. Get the salt and the caraway and the whey all mixed well. And then, we're going to bruise the cabbage. I found this little uh, pestle, I think it's called, a little grinder, in an Oriental store for like $2. And this works great. So what I'm going to do is literally just break the cabbage up enough to break some of the cells open and allow the salt to pull the juice out. Now, you don't have to reduce this to a pulp because that wouldn't make very appetizing sauerkraut. But you do want to get some of this bruised and, 
and let the salt draw out the moisture from the cabbage. Okay, and that's going to do it for this head. I'm going to pack this up and then we'll continue with the next step. Now I've gotten my cabbage chopped up, I've got the ingredients mixed, and today I'm actually making six heads of cabbage into sauerkraut. So I'm using my large water seal crock that I, I showed you. And I've tried repeatedly to get video of what I do inside and it's almost impossible. So instead I'm just going to describe it to you. Um, I take my little whatever this thing is and I mash the cabbage down inside of the crock so that it's um, got as much air out and it's as solid as it possibly can be. And then I'm going to take these extra leaves that I've got here and I'm going to split them opposite the stem. This one's already kind of broken. So that they lay out flat. And then I'm going to use these to hold the cabbage in place so that it doesn't break loose and float around and make contact with the air. So what I'll do is I'll take these, I'll get down inside the crock, I'll lay these on top of the sauerkraut and then I'll tuck this down on the ed around the edge. I'll go in and I'll take another one and I'll start it, tuck it down on the edge, lay it flat on top, get another one, do the same procedure and essentially lay the cabbage leaves out facing in on top of the cabbage to keep that kraut flat and then when I put my weight on top of that that will hold it down below the brine. Now I've already got some started so you can see here I had the kraut, I put the cabbage leaves down around the top of it. Now the problem with a um, container like this which works great but it's hard to get anything solid down inside of there to hold the kraut down. This actually comes with little glass weights. But the glass weights really don't put enough pressure on the kraut. Once it starts to ferment, it's going to fill with gas. It's going to want to come up. So in this case, what I did was I took a um, gallon freezer bag, Ziploc bag. I put several cups of uh, filtered water, two cups, I think it was, two or three, with a tablespoon of um, the salt same dilution you'd use in the brine and I took all the air out of it and then folded it down on top to hold the sauerkraut down. Now in this case this will work. In my water seal I will take the plates that I've used and put those down aside then put another weight and a rock on top of that and then seal it up. Now you want to make sure that your sauerkraut is at least an inch and, and maybe more uh, below, kept below the surface of the brine so it doesn't come in contact with the air. That will help to preserve it against spoilage and uh, help with the fermentation. Well, I hope this was helpful. As usual, I'd like to encourage you to subscribe to my channel and share these videos with your friends. So until next time, I'm Doug Cuny. Take care.